Hi everyone, I'd like to show off a vehicle we've been working on the last 12 months and um, yeah, it's really quite a special one so there's a lot of products on there you already know about but this vehicle came about, um, we had a customer from overseas get in contact and he was really in love with the Land Cruisers, the Mark IV drive product as well so his end goal is to travel from the top of America to the very south so uh, he wanted us to set up a vehicle to enable him to do that safely so it's behind me here, it's really exciting. It's um, it's a left-hand drive 79 series dual cab. It's been sent over, had a lot of fun doing it. There's more than 300 hours going into it just singly by one guy. Uh, hell of a lot of other hours in by the rest of the team on um, pre preparation and planning. Uh, so yeah, it's really quite an interesting vehicle and we'll just show you some really key, key interesting facts about it that you may be interested in. And um, if you're in America one of these days soon, you may just see it going down the road. So the vehicle arrived to uh, Port of Brisbane in March last year. It should have been earlier, but COVID and shipping and containers sort of caused a few delays. So yeah, it got to us in March. And uh, the, when the vehicle arrived, um, it had been armour plated actually. So I did speak to our customer about why that was done. So when his trip involves like going from the very top of America to the very south, he will travel through a few areas that there's some uh, um, people there that are not nice sometimes and there is a chance that it could be an in instance uh, where they're in danger, so he, he's had the vehicle armour plate, and that was actually done in Dubai. So it arrived to us like that, and we took it from there. Customer key requirements were the portals, um, and he liked the idea of the coils as well for comfort and uh, durability, flexibility. So we got together with Mark's 4 Drive and J-Max and uh, converted the vehicle into a, a, a hybrid portal and J-Max coil conversion vehicle, and it's got the 300mm 4495 chassis installed as well, so that'll handle the weight. One other key part of that part of the build is we've used the J-Max armoured front diff housing to suit the weight of the front axle. We've got the Mark's and the J-Max uh, rear housing is in there as well, so on the Mark's four drive portal, so six inches of lift under the diff for a start, and we have added suspension to carry the weight, so and it's using J-Max Alpha remote shocks. Another company we've collaborated on this one as well is uh, Off-Road Creative. The guys already had their own uh, bumper for the 79 series in action, but they've worked with us and, and, and added in some wing pieces to suit our portal flares. So that's come up really nice. So thank you to Off-Road Creative. So just to explain the driveline side of the build in depth a little bit further, the J-Max front and rear diff housings were sent to Mark's four wheel drive in Melbourne. Mark's then modified the diff housing ends to suit the portal system and they were test fitted and everything down there. So then they, everything was shipped back to us and we assembled and installed to the vehicle. So that's how that took place. So it's got the J-Max chassis, the J-Max coil springs, the links and everything like that. Basically the portals have been put on the end of the J-Max gear and we're also using the Mark's full drive handbrake system which is excellent on these big heavy rigs. So just must say this in the video that that particular work is not legal in Australia. We do not have to meet an Australian standard with this. There is no approval for that particular build on a 70 series at the moment. So uh, yeah, we cannot supply that product to anyone else that, that's local. So yeah, but it's going to the States, so it's not a problem over there. So that was actually quite exciting. We could just go our hardest and set it up to suit the customer's needs. So another part of this build that we've been really excited about and I know that, like, we've got Norwell product. I know they're known overseas, they distribute over there. We've got J-Max, we've got Mark's four-wheel drive, obviously Safari. What we're really excited about is sending this vehicle back overseas with a heap of Australian gear on it. So for us, that's uh, been a, a, a real exciting part of the job. A couple of other challenges that the team faced um, when doing the job, so we, we wanted the Mark's four-wheel drive brake booster on here, but obviously being a left-hand drive, you brake system works and clutch system works from this side so Darren actually did a great job here he got the the booster in but we had to modify some hydraulic hoses and have them recrimped and fitted and tested to suit so that we get take the the feed for the hydraulic booster from the power steering system a couple other things to add we've always obviously always the GSL air intake air box but a PWR van system the other camping interesting thing we've got here is we've added a glind hot water shower um, for our customer, uh, so he can basically pull up and yeah, have instant hot water once his engine's warmed up. So another little good addition, a little bit of time going into setting that up and where it goes. Yeah, once again, the boys have done a cracking job on that one. So when you're walking around the car and you're having a look at the videos, there's a couple of things that are really cool about these overseas models. Not the mirrors, of course, but that's them and they're electric. 
The actual badges that the guys uh, over, this one coming out of Dubai, the actual badges they get are really nice. I wish we could actually get them here in Australia, but um, yeah, it wouldn't work if you put a big clear view on or something. But another uh, key part of this job was um, the interior, being a left-hand drive and being armour plated, as you can see, very different. We had to get the consoles, roof consoles, um, custom made. So, and like with things the way they are today, everyone's sort of booked out for a long time in advance. So, the lengths we'll go to is we'll, to get it right for our customer. We actually threw this on a car trailer, towed it to Sydney to the Department of Interior, and the guys were really accommodating down there. Um, they fitted us in, but we had to get the vehicle to them, and they did all the custom work, uh, which you'll you'll see on the video of the roof console, floor console, rear console, and they did an absolutely wonderful job. It's got a little um, 15 litre Rady fridge in there as well. Okay, so I'll just come around to the uh, driver's side. Funny to say that standing here, but um, as you can see, there's some of the armor, the glass, the bulletproof glass and the armor plating, some Kevlar here, just out interest sake to give you a look. But um, in behind, part of a bit of a standard issue on most of our builds these days is uh, using the Kangawi power hub system. So you can't see it from where I'm standing now, but we'll get you a shot of it. Darren's got it in here behind the seat. It's uh, where he faced a fair few challenges getting it in there due to the um, all the bulletproofing on the rear firewall. But he came up with a plating system that worked really well. So in here we got the Kangawi Power Hub. It's 110 amp hour lithium slimline, and that'll run the in-vehicle loads, the fridges and, and any other accessories that a customer wants to run in there. And the orange plate you'll see above that is the Mark IV drive foot plate for the OE jack in the event of a flat tyre. Just got um, Darren here, otherwise known as Fatty. Uh, Darren's a, one of our head technicians and he does a lot of our tourer builds. So he's a portal master technician and if there is such a thing, but I reckon he is because he does a hell of a lot of them. Um, and have done a fair few J-Max jobs as well. But um, I probably just wanted you to explain the electrical side of it because um, you designed it and installed it that just for the um, canopy and made pretty well everything you did you bear in mind that the vehicle's not at hand to get at real easy from us it's overseas so yeah that's yeah. right so in the planning process because it's going overseas we wanted to make it so that we could you know help the customer out still offer that post build service you know not just build it send it not worry about it like still offer that service to the customer in the future so we ran with the Kangoey system for the power hubs so we've got 330 amp hours of Kangoey lithium battery power in there and then we went with the the Vitron um, like all your smart shunts and and that sort of gear so it all talks together and it's also got the remote dial in so if you got wi-fi anywhere in the world uh Kangoey or Vitron can dial in and look at the state of the batteries how they charge and all that sort of stuff yeah so you got the support from Kangoey themselves um, they can can get in and have a look at how the system's working if you did have any questions that was one major reason why we went that way You'll see you got a um, little inverter in there, but it's set up for the states. Yeah, yeah. that's right, yeah. So when we um, had the uh, source and inverter, we had to make sure it actually had the, the plug to suit the United States, 110 volts. So the one that we could find really available for us in our time frames was the uh, Enerdrive yeah. inverter, and they're a very good product. So we decided to go with that one as well. Yeah. Made a lot of hours going into planning this one. A lot of hours going into running wires. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of wires tucked in there that you can't see. Um, yep. Definitely a lot of hours going into planning, but it's come up a treat. But our customers should be well and truly able to live off grid for a fair bit of time. Absolutely, yeah. and that was the plan. You might wonder why we've got an amber light up there on the roof bar, and, and it, obviously this trip is going to see a, a lot of snow, fog, that sort of thing. So the amber light um, obviously works better in, in snow and fog. So that's the reason why we've gone that way. And you'll see we've used light force lighting all around the vehicle. I'd like to say thanks to light force. They've actually um, supported us on this one. And that amber light up there, that's actually a new product, not yet released, but soon to, soon to be here. And we have tried it at, at night. Unfortunately, we haven't had any snow, but um, it's actually a great product. So thank you to light force. I'd, I'd like to thank our customer for the opportunity to do this job. It's uh, one of a kind for us so far. It's been, been a, an interesting job, been quite fulfilling for our team. Um, and the other thing that we're really super excited about and can't wait to see it over some photos of it in America is all the Australian engineering and products that are on this vehicle heading overseas back to our customers. So that's another thing we're so excited about. So hope you enjoy the video. Hope you enjoy having a look around it. If you're in uh, America, you never know, you might see it. Thank you.